we can extend the application of linear least squares regression to also fit models that are higher order polynomials of the independent variable, as long as the unknown coefficients that we're solving for appear only in linear combinations. Your modeling textbook refers to this as polynomial regression in section 5.4, but in fact this is linear least squares regression because the unknown coefficients are combined in linear terms. Consider a general polynomial of order m, which will have m plus 1 coefficients. Alpha 0 for the x to the 0 term, alpha 1 for the x term, alpha 2 for the x squared term, and so on through alpha m for the x to the m term. The sum of the squared residuals is, is the sum of the data at each point minus the model squared. To solve for the m plus 1 coefficients, we'll need m plus 1 equations. These equations will all be derived by taking the partial derivatives of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to each of the coefficients and setting that partial derivative equal to 0. This guarantees that we've found a minimum in the sum of the squared residuals. By way of example, we'll do this for a model that is quadratic in the independent variable x. Our model has three unknown coefficients, alpha 0, alpha 1, and alpha 2. We subtract the model from each of the data points to obtain the residuals, we square each residual, and then we sum them up to get the sum of the squared residuals. The three equations that we need to solve for alpha 0, alpha 1, and alpha 2 are then obtained by taking the partial derivatives of this SSR equation with respect to each of the unknown coefficients, alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 0. Doing that provides us with a set of three linear equations for the three unknowns, alpha 0, alpha 1, and alpha 2. For a cubic equation, we use the same approach and we end up with four equations for the four unknowns, alpha 0, alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3. You can see that the same pattern will hold as we go to higher order polynomials. Solving for the unknown coefficients amounts to solving a alpha equals b for the unknown alpha, where a is the coefficient matrix represented by the sums in these equations, and b is the vector of values on the right hand sides of these equations, which also come from sums of the known values of the data points, xi and yi. We already know how to solve systems of linear equations like this, from chapter 4 of the methods text. We can generalize this approach to perform what the methods textbook calls polynomial regression for the m plus 1 matrix, the elements of which can be computed from this simple formula. And the vector b also has elements that could be computed from a simple formula. This can be done to perform linear least squares regression to fit a set of data to any order polynomial in the independent variable. This can also be done very quickly using MATLAB. MATLAB has a function polyfit, which fits xy data to a polynomial of order n, where x is a vector of x values, y is a vector of corresponding y values, and n is a scalar integer that's the order of the polynomial. The output of the polyfit function is a vector. That vector contains the unknown coefficients of the polynomial in descending powers of x. So if n is equal to 3, the vector p will contain four values. The first value will be the coefficient of the x cubed term. The second value will be the coefficient of the x squared term. The third value will be the coefficient of the x term. And the last value will be the constant. The polyval function does the opposite. The polyval function takes an input argument p, which are the coefficients of the various powers of x in a polynomial, and an input argument x, which can be a scalar or a vector. Polyval then provides the values of that polynomial at each of the values in the x vector. If x is a scalar, then y will only be one value. Now that we know how to perform linear least squares regression, in the next video we'll introduce three measures of how well our regression model fits the data. These are measures of the goodness of fit.